Valentine's. Okay, it is Big Mama. For those of you that are new here, welcome. You've done gotten trapped in. <laughs> You're part of the crazy now. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. If you like what you see, hit that like button. Uh, comment. Subscribe. All the things. All the things. Sorry I'm kind of scattered in my A. And then I'll pop up and then I won't. Sorry about that. It's just that's how we're rolling right now. Hubby is home with confirmed COVID. So far, knock on wood, he is good. Um, he has like a pretty good headache, body aches. He was congested, but we've gotten that taken care of, I think. Um, he's on core seeding. HBP. He's got high blood pressure. And so he has to be careful about what he takes. Um, and Mucinex. And we are just pumping full of vitamins. Um, my infusion nurse, when she had COVID, they told her to take certain things. And so she told me, you need to be taking these. And I take them daily anyway. Just to be sure she was telling me I need to be taking them all the time so I am so luckily we had those at home and so I knew immediately to get him started on those um yeah yeah so we're rolling along pretty good um in fact I think he's coming out of the dungeon I've had him trapped and quarantined in our room since he got home Friday afternoon Yep, there he goes. I told him to enjoy some fresh air and sunshine outside. It is wonderful out there right now. Our high today is 69, and I believe every bit of it. And that sunshine feels so good. So he just went out to go sit on the porch. So once he comes back in, I will have to quarantine. Well, spray everything. But that's okay. That's okay. He's up. He's moving around. I think the sunshine and fresh air are really going to do him some good. Um, if you do have COVID, if you have friends with COVID or family members, I pray first of all that nobody gets it. But we know for a fact somebody we know or somebody we are related to has it or will have it. That's just how it's rolling. So if they do... Um, if they're able, tell them to kind of get up and walk around a little bit, uh, drink lots of water, and get on some form of Mucinex, as long as it's the Gufastatin 600 milligram. I'm not a doctor in any way. Mm, let me rephrase. I'm not a doctor. You ain't taking doctor's advice. This is just what we're doing, what we were told to do in these circumstances. I know for a fact from prior experience, um, if you have pneumonia, COVID, whatever it is, you do better if you move a little bit, like during the course of the day. You're getting up and you're getting that crap stirred up where you can get it out. Um, you do not want it settling in your lungs. You want it to vacay the preme. Um, drink lots of water. It's going to flush that virus. Flush it, you know, help get it out of your system a little bit quicker or faster or whatever. But those are the two go-tos. Move around and drink lots of water. Uh, when I had pneumonia real bad, that's what I had to do in order to get out of the hospital. He told me, the only way you're going to get out is you can get up, move around, and uh, drink lots of water. I hooked it and got it. And, but if you see that you need a little bit more professional uh, medical attention, please seek it. Please seek medical attention if you think you need to. I know that for a fact, too. So, those of you that don't know, I was on a vent 57 days with COVID back in 2020. So, yes, trust me when I say, if you think you need that medical attention, please seek it. 
Anywho, moving on to today's video. Hey, hon, how you doing? How's your mom and them? Um, we are going to be doing, I'm so excited for this. I'd seen on, it wasn't Pinterest. I had been looking and searching. And I did just like a search for the video. I did a YouTube search. I'm finding things that are similar, but not the recipe I saw. So, and all of them are a little bit different. And I'm going to give you the Big Mama take on it. Volcano potatoes. Yeah, you heard me right. Volcano potatoes. Kermit said it looks like a zit. <laughs> like, no, let's not think that. I'm going to come up with one of the pictures. Now, the pictures kind of do all favor. Um... Doesn't that look amazing? So if you saw my grocery haul um, yesterday's video, you know that I would gotten some specific items. I got the extra large jumbo potatoes. There's my head. There's the potato. <laughs> they are pretty big. They are pretty big, I do have to say. Um, but you're going to take those, cut them in olive oil, give them a good dose of coarse salt, wrap them in aluminum foil, bake them 400 for about 45 minutes. Okay, that's our first step. You want baked potatoes. You can do them in the microwave, but they just don't taste as good. We are at four o'clock now, so I need to get my potatoes going in the oven. So we're going to do that first. And you do it just like you would a normal baked potato. Coat it in oil, do it with salt, wrap it in foil, and cook it. Okay, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, I think I got y'all straight. Maybe, yeah, you can see. I'm just taking my washed potatoes. I'm coating them in oil. Olive oil. And we are going to just kind of rub it all over the skin. And we're going to take some sea salt. And we're going to just kind of sprinkle on there like that. And I always do mine like tinted. You take the foil and you're going to go up to the top. You aren't going to squeeze them in there. You're just going to kind of roll up from the top to get kind of close and then you're going to kind of squish in the sides. And he's like loose kind of in there. I mean, my top is way up here and the potato starts here. Okay? Um, I found it just works better. It, yeah, it just for whatever reason, it just, that's why I've always done it, was tinted. I don't know who taught me that trick. I know it wasn't Grandmama. I don't know where I saw that. Might have been at church when we could help cook on Wednesday night. I need to turn it this way. And turn it that way. Yeah, and you're just gonna kind of bring it together. See how my potatoes way down here. Bring it together up here and just start rolling down. Yeah, see about right there. Pushing your sides. My potato, my side is here. My potato starts here. Okay. Got one more to go. That man is enjoying outside. I went right to the door and I talked to him. And uh, he said he misses me and I sure miss him. I tell you what. We've been communicating through doors. But it ain't the same. He got me a bear. Oh, y'all yeah, saw the stuff there, okay? He loves his little stuff there. I still sleep with mine that he got me every night. I have to have my bear. 
Like I said, what we tease one another. Give me the bear. You know, you give me the bear. So now he's got his own bear. Alright, so I'm going to put these things away. Da, 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 da. And we are going to cook these 400 degrees about, like I said, 45 minutes. So in the oven they go. my hands and I'll be back for the next step okay we're back baked potatoes are done so let's scan down this is what we're working with remember we tinted our potatoes I'm gonna kind of move these out of the way so we have a work surface I think I could put my bowl down on top of that. All right, now you're going to take your baked potato. And I got to let the steam out some on those. Woo! Yeah, they're hot. They're done. Oh, yeah. All right, now what we're going to do, we are going to cut the bottom off. You just kind of determine which side you want to be the bottom. You're going to cut like just a little bit off if I can get it still let's see I'm hoping this old joker's good done he might hmm. I was gonna say he might need to go back in for a minute let's just yeah you know. Don't test me. <laughs> he needs a little bit more doing. I should have checked that before I got started. Dad, burn it to Hennies. I bet they all are going to need a little bit more loving in the oven. Let's see. Yep. All right. So I'm not even going to check the other two. We're just going to ball them back up. Close it up. And we're going to close this one up. And close the ends. Put these two back on. We're just going to pop them in the oven for another probably 15 minutes. I think that will get us. We're going to put back on 400. Because these are extra, extra large taters. Setting my timer. All right, we'll be back. Okay, now my potatoes are good done. <laughs> um, what I'm doing is I'm cutting off. Let's see. Can we get you down here? There you go. Oh, too far down. Okay, we can do this. Let's all work together. It's imp it's possible. I was about to say it's impossible. But no, we got this. We got this. There we go. Okay. Um, We want to cut off the bottom and the top, or the top and the bottom, however you want to work it. Cut off both the ends. Let's put it that way. Save your ends. I'm just cutting them off and I'm putting them in my bowl. We are going to peel them, but what I'm trying to do right now is get these puppies just cool enough that I can handle them. Technically, I should have baked these earlier this afternoon, like way earlier. But I didn't. I don't know what I was doing. I was goofing off. I was taking a nap. I was, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Whew. Yeah, they hot potato. Do y'all remember playing that game as a kid? I don't even think kids nowadays know what. They probably think hot potato means hot potato. Go ask your kids if they know what hot potato is. Yeah. To think we found enjoyment in tossing a tater around or a sock. We we played with a sock. We played with aluminum foil balls. Potatoes were too precious to waste. 
so okay I've cut off all my ends I've got them in my bowl I'm just gonna kind of let these chill like I said I should have done them earlier today but I did not because they could they could be cool by now so yeah it is what it is you're gonna cut off your ends now when they're cool enough we are going to scoop out the majority of the potato you do not want to hit the bottom and you don't want to scrape too much off your sides because you want it to be sturdy you want it to be you know where it'll hold up because you're gonna stand them on one end that's why I was saying the bottom um, you're gonna essentially wind up you're gonna wind up with your potato like that okay can you see that um, just taking it and standing it up that's what we're gonna do with them we're gonna stand them up uh oh I don't know how that happened there I think we fixed the problem okay but yeah we're gonna wind up standing them up you like I said you don't want to collapse your walls you know um, I'm gonna see if I can take a pot holder let's, let's try this let's try this all right we're gonna take a pot holder I'm gonna kick him out of the way we are going to put it around let's try holding it so far so good they make those of gloves I guess if you had those all right I'm gonna take my spoon some people show where they use a melon baller oh this might be too big maybe I do need my little melon baller I've got one I say I do uh, da, da, da. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't cause no problems. Be kind to one another. I'm showing you I've got two. I know I have three total. I don't know where my small one is. Dum dum dum. Oh, here it is. Look here. Let's see. I'm not used to having things like this. scared it's gonna it's gonna get too much let's try this I'm gonna take the see how it's scraping the side it was getting the we don't want that to happen so let's take our back of our at the bottom of our spoon and we're just gonna gently take it along the edges I learned this doing something at some point. Oh, it was when I was doing the potatoes, but it was like cut in half to do the twice baked potatoes, and we needed to scoop them out. And that's how I scooped them out, but left the skins. So I'm just going to take this and hold with my pot holder. Don't dare grab them bare-handed all right now I can see now I've done punctured through to my bottom I got a little I got a little happy slappy so I don't need to puncture no more all right we're gonna call that good and I did make my bottom fall out dad burn it so now what? Um, I don't know. Right when I told y'all, don't hit your bottom. <laughs> don't do as I do, do as I say. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll work out okay. So I'm just going to take the back of my... Y'all see, I'm, I'm knowing what I'm doing, right? <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm screwing up. Okay. I didn't go near to the side like I did on that one. And we're just going to kind of scrape. I'm not going to hit bottom. I'm not going to hit bottom.
All right. I didn't hit bottom on that one. Yay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to finish scraping out these taters, and I'll be back. Okay. I'm back. All right. Now, I've scooped out my potatoes. This one did good. This was one that did pretty good. I'm losing some skin. Um, here's the first one I did that the bottom fell out. Um, and my fourth one actually broke, like split down the side. All right, so I scooped out the potatoes. I put my potato stuff in here. Even those ends that are cut off don't waste nothing. And if you drop skin in there, it'll be all right. Fiber's good for you. Um, but I took and I mixed about an 8-ounce thing of sour cream, um, half a stick of butter, um, probably a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese, um, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and about a fourth of a teaspoon of uh, parsley flakes. And then, to taste, salt and pepper. In fact, I forgot to do my salt. Gonna do my pepper. Alright, now, I'm just gonna kind of mix that up really good. In fact, I took my potato masher and uh, mashed it up really, really well. Incorporated that cheese, got that butter, because the mixture was hot, that butter actually melted pretty good. Um, right now, I am going to stuff my potatoes back. Yeah, we scooped them out, stuff it back. I think what I am going to do on this one, that the, uh, body came out of, we're going to add some foil to his bottom to make it where it won't just ush everywhere. I want it just a little bit because we're going to do something else to these potatoes after we get them stuffed. Okay, how can we do this? I think I'm just wanting a little plug. We're just going to make like a little plug to kind of go just a little bit up in there. I want it tight enough. That makes kind of like a little cork. Okay? So, we're going to kind of... Uh-oh, he's starting to split. No, don't split. Okay, I got that. I'm not pushing it any further because he's starting to split. And we don't want it... Sp oh, it did split. Well, I think it'll be okay. Alright, we're going to start stuffing. Doc mixed stuffings. I want it to go down in there. Best way of doing is with your fingers. I know it seems kind of gross, but let's get something to kind of mush it down in there. We might be doing like we scooped it out. We might be using the end of a spoon. Let's try if we can use the spoon. Okay, get it in there. We're going to squish, squish, squish. It's kind of trying to like load toothpaste back into the, con the, yeah, the tube. There you go. I was looking for the word. Now we are going to have some filling left, and that's fine. I can actually use it probably Wednesday. I will make potato cakes. I'll show y'all how to do potato cakes. How about that? Okay, see, it's done split. So, we're just going to, oh, it's it's pretty full. Alright, we're just going to kind of smush it together. And that potato is going to kind of hold it kind of like glue or cement. We're going to do something that will actually fix this. Alright, now we're going to stuff this guy. hope your weekend has found you doing wonderful and 
you're enjoying this one well for those of you that don't have wonderful weather I'm so sorry we made the comment this afternoon when Fat Man was sitting outside it was so glorious like I said we had a high of like 69 70 that sunshine felt so daggum good the wind wasn't strong no humidity whatsoever it was the perfect absolute perfect weather day like for real those don't happen a lot in Alabama usually you're sweating your eyeballs um, the humidity is so bad even in the winter time we can have high humidity um yeah it's awful all right he did not split I was trying to be very careful so we've got him pretty packed Carol Beth keeps coming through looking what you doing and I'll tell her I'm working on supper okay then she'll come back and what you doing because <laughs> this is taking me a process oh you can't see me getting this stuff out of the bowl there I'll put it there all right now remember he split just a little bit right there so I'm gonna be careful on that note I'm just taking it with my finger and putting it in there I want to get a good bit I like them packed all right I think that's about gonna do it for that one okay And it can stick up some. It'll be all right. This is what I have left. Hold it. This is what I have left. A whole big bowl full. So, Wednesday night. I forgot what we're having Wednesday. I know I'm doing a taco bake thing tomorrow night. So, that wouldn't go well. Wednesday night, we will do potato pancakes. You'll love them. I will definitely show the recipe for that. It's a true southern staple. Y'all let me know if you have it up north. I'm curious. All right, I'm set this to the side right now. We're gonna get plugging away. No, we are not done with our um, potatoes. All right. Because that filling is done. I mean, you know, it's it's what's cooked. Um, let me go get some toothpicks. I'm so sorry. I had to find them. You're going to want toothpicks. You're going to need bacon. Just follow along with me. <laughs> you're going to need bacon. And you're going to need your favorite barbecue sauce. I've got mine upside down because we're draining. It's almost empty. So it's all these Berman's Honey Barbecue Sauce. We love this stuff. If you haven't tried it, go try it. It's Aldi, and it's fairly inexpensive. We got some for 89 cents one time. So we stocked up. We got honey, and then we got the bourbon brown sugar. I think was one of the flavors. All right. I'm just going here. Going to open your bacon. This is what had me with this recipe. I was like, oh yes, please, thank you. I have to make this, and like now. So, <laughs> I added it to, y'all saw my grocery haul. And I told y'all I'd gotten certain, some things for a recipe. Well, this is that recipe. Belinda, you wanted to see it. This is it, girl. Sandy, I think you too had said you wanted to see it. All right, bacon, you are going to take, start at the top, and you're going to wrap around. That's why I was saying it was okay if this one split some, because you're going to wrap your bacon around it. See how it split all the way to here? You're going to wrap your bacon around it, and it's going to hold it together. Oh, I need to turn my oven back on. I turned it off out of habit. You know, when you take something out of the oven, you automatically turn it off, which is a good habit to have. But, if you're trying to 
continue baking something. Now, I can't forget that this one has that aluminum foil. All right, and you're just going to put a couple of toothpicks in to kind of hold that bacon in while it bakes. You don't want it, like, falling down or... And they showed, like, they had done several, you know, to kind of hold it together. Pull yourself together. That one's done for now. We're going to do something else to it later. All right. Dancing hands. Who is it? J. Morrell Stewart talks about talking hand. I do. I always talk using my hands pretty much. Um, yeah. I don't know why. I'm either crazy or very hyper. I would go with both. Am I A, crazy, B, hyper, or C, both? <laughs> Leave your comment down below. <laughs> Crazies are us. There you go. Alright, I'm just going to kind of go around and stab. Looks like a little alien or something. It's taking two pieces of bacon per potato. And this is the thick sliced bacon. So, I figured I needed the thick to really make an impact. Well, I need one more slice. To really make an impact on the potatoes. Now, I didn't want a little bit. You know, have you noticed that about bacon now? The price is jacked up. The sizes of the containers or packaging has gotten smaller. And if you get normal bacon, it is so thin, you could read a newspaper through it. Like, for real. Alright. I think that's going to do it. Now, we're going to... Uh-oh. Why are you not wanting to sit right? Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to put this in the oven for five minutes. Why are you not wanting to cooperate? Oh, uh, he's a little janked up right here on this end. All right. Maybe he... Well, okay, we're just going to leave him alone. Thank you, John. This thing. All right, we're going to pop this in the oven for about 10 minutes. While they're doing their thing, I am going to start cleaning. Whoa. I need to lower a rack on my oven. Yeah, I'm going to have to lower. I'm going to have to lower a rack. I raised it up. Oh, I made cinnamon toast the other night. So, I had to raise it up. So, there you go. I should have gotten my big heavy duty um, cookie sheets, cooking pans, whatever. <laughs> All right, I set my timer. Yes, we are going to be using our barbecue sauce in just a little bit. Hang tight. We ain't done with them taters yet. What we baked them, we scooped them, we stuffed them, we wrapped them, but we ain't done yet, y'all. <laughs> you just thought we were done. All right, now, to go with it, I am doing something kind of simple because I figured I, I really wanted the potato to be like the focal point or the entree point of the meal. Um, and I want the meat just kind of be a, like a side. Does that make sense? You can really stretch your money and stretch, well, you can stretch your food budget. You can stretch your meat and your meals. If you start thinking of meat as a side dish, a lot of your other countries do that. If you notice, well, that, and they'll eat their bigger meal like at lunch. And then their suppers are like a light meal, um, like our lunches are. 
you know, I know in Germany, and they still do, um, a lot of them just do like bread, cheese, fruit um, for their suppers. In France, they do. Um, I know in Germany, they would have a big lunch. Everything basically would close up. At least that's how it was in the 70s. Everything would close up. Kids would get, go home from school around lunchtime. And you would eat a big, hearty meal. Take a nap. They allowed nap time, even for grown-ups. And then we went back to work or school. That's how we rolled. Um, and that's just how it was. I'm putting this in a ziplock bag. I could use my vacuum sealer, but I have a feeling we're going to go through this bacon pretty fast and not need a vacuum sealer. So there you go. Anywho, we would eat, you know, the bigger meal, and then our supper or dinner would be the lighter meal. Yeah. And it helped with digestion. It helped with weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think in France they did the same, basically the same thing. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm cleaning up from that mess. We're going to pull it out. i got about eight minutes left on my timer, and then we're going to finish these puppies up. Oh, I was going to show you what we're doing for meat. Well, Meat-wise, we are having beef kielbasa or smoked sausage. I always call this kielbasa sausage because if I say sausage... I mean like breakfast sausage, patty sausage, link sausage, breakfast sausage, the tube sausage. This to me is kielbasa sausage. So we're going to do this. I'm just going to slice it up, do it with ketchup and brown sugar, and you will not, not believe how stinking good this is. So we're going to do that. And then when we were cleaning out the freezers, I found some cooked pinto beans. I found some cooked baby uh, baby finger peas, lady finger peas, baby finger peas, however you want to call them, and then black eyed peas. So I've got those already cooked peas in my arsenal of quick dishes. I knew I wanted to devote a lot of time to those potatoes. So I needed my other part of the meal to be simple, quick, you know. I took out the ladyfinger peas. We're going to, I've had them thawed in the sink. All I got to do is dump them like in a little boil. Technically, I can heat these puppies up in the microwave. I just thought about that. We're going to nuke these. This will be done in a skillet. And supper will be done. Because I'm still working on the potatoes. Like I said, we aren't done with them jokers yet. They think they're done, but they ain't done. All right, I'm going to wrap up our potato leftovers. Like I said, I'm excited about having this. Um, I was going to say maybe I should see if they want any of this on their plate, like mashed potatoes. But I'm going to save it for potato cakes. You'll love potato cakes. All right, I'm going to clean up, get other stuff going. I'll be back. Okay, I'm working on my sausage now. I love getting ours at either Aldi because it's fairly reasonable there. Um, I get the Aldi brand. Doesn't bother me a bit. My timer's about to go off. Um, but I love getting it at Sam's because you can get a four-pack very inexpensive. Very inexpensive. And that's one time a month. One time a week. One time a week. I know we're going to be doing something with uh, kielbasa sausage. And I have learned, take a shredded knife. Let me clean it off. Take a shredded knife. See how it's got the little shreds? But it's not shredded all the way. This is plain. This is shredded. You can take a shredded knife. Hold it up toward the shred, and you're just going to cut just a little bit and poke through. I didn't have to saw it. I didn't have to lay it down to cut it. But you want pieces about like that. And that way, the little pieces go further. They think they're getting a lot, 
Whereas if I was to have this and skillet, they're going to need three or four or five of these. Whereas if you cut them that way, a, a good many, you know, it looks like a lot, but it's going to equal about what I do cut off long ways. So they don't need four or five. Does that make sense? It, it, the appearance, the image, the visual makes them look like they're getting a lot. But they're actually getting the true serving size. Because this says serving size, it serves six people. That one kielbasa sausage is supposed to feed six people. Not the six people I had. Um, not with all the kids, that was six. And maybe Bo were seven, eight. So yeah, no, no, not six people I knew. Uh-uh. So, come up like that, it goes further. But seriously, that one way how you can make your meat budget stretch a little bit further. Think of things that you can buy in bulk um, or when they're on sale and you could get a good price. We get the four pack of these one time a week. I know we're going to do kielbasa sausage. You can add them one, uh, next week. I'm going to take those um, pinto beans out of the freezer. I'm going to add a kielbasa sausage to it and uh, make some cornbread. And that is going to be supper. If I have, I've got a bunch of potatoes over there. Um, I'll probably do fried potatoes. If y'all have a recipe for really good fried potatoes, please, please leave it down below. It would help me tremendously. I've always wanted a really good fried potato recipe, and I just can't find it. I just, I, I tried making them like my way and adjusting, and it just don't work. It just don't work. All right, I'm just going to kind of leave these sizzling in this pan for just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm not going to add our ketchup and brown sugar mix just yet. My potatoes are done with that part, with that process. Let's see what we're looking like. Uh, the bacon can get a little bit more crispy. A little bit more. So we're going to set the timer for a few more minutes. I think you crisp up a little bit. Alright, we're going with this sausage now, buddy. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Oh, it smells so good. Now, like I said, next week, i got to remember that. I've got to put that on my menu. Um, this is brown sugar I have left. We usually try to keep... But I want to get this old out of my container. I've got a new bag. But I want to use up all this first. If I don't, that old is just going to be sitting there and sitting there. And it will never get used. And it's just going to keep getting older. And I don't want that. So, let's out everything. And then I've got this. I can put it here. And then I've got another whole big bag. Insane. I'm going to do that later. We're working on this. And we're going quick, people. All right. So, that left me about half a cup, maybe three-fourths. We're going to say three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar. I'm just going to use what I've got. I'm not going to, you know. We're talking about how you can use things up in your pantry and in your arsenal of foods. All right, we're going to squirt some ketchup. And I never, ever measure how I do it. There's no true science. There's no, okay, if you're using half cup, this is how much you need to get. I don't know. I just squirt. One good squirt. And another good squirt. We're going to stir this up. And I go by color. We're going to see what color this is. And what's going to happen is as this cooks with that sausage, it is going to caramelize. Essentially, you could use barbecue sauce. In fact, I could have used the barbecue sauce that I'm going to use, but it's on its last leg. I'm trying to use it up. It's the end of the month, and I'm trying to use up, you know, things before 
we open new things. I always keep extra ketchup, extra barbecue, so I didn't have to buy any of that this time. I have it in my pantry. Right now, these have been cooking. They're good. I'm just going to put those potatoes on board. Kind of speed them up. I am going to put this in there. And that was a good color. I mean, you know, you're just going almost like what you would do for a meatloaf. I never measure it for meatloaf either. You can taste it. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. You cannot go wrong with brown sugar and ketchup. You just can't. It, it, it's foolproof. All right, so we're going to stir that in. And we want to coat them all. Everybody get mixed in. Meet one another. There you go. They're going to get good and caramelized. And that's what we're looking for. It will get, actually get sticky. You do not want to make this in a cast iron skillet. Because it's going to caramelize and it's going to get sticky. And then you're going to have to scrub your uh, pan your cast iron and you don't want to have to do that I mean I guess you could if you used like I want to get one of those chain things that is actually made to clean um, it's actually made to clean cast iron skillets I want one because they say it works wonderful it's almost like a dish rag but it's chains you know I think it has mesh on the outside. I'm not sure. All right. So, but this is one way I do calabasa sausage. Like I said, I'll throw it in. We're just waiting for that to caramelize. I'll keep chatting. Um, it's been a while since we've chatted. Um, Oh, pinto beans with the um, kielbasa. It's good to throw in chili. Um, it's really good to throw in chili. Do a low, low country bowl, and that has been a request for the month of January. And I just never, I don't think I ever made it. I don't think I did. I bought all the ingredients for it. But it seems like we, we substituted and did something else, or I don't know. I don't know how that happened. But anywho, so that will be, that will be, and I'll have to show y'all that one for sure. All right. Our actual alarm might go off. I am burning my hand, y'all, burning my hand. All right, we're going to stick that right there. Pray it don't slide off. I've got to move some things. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Don't slide, don't slide. Alright, I'm going to move this to over here. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. Alright. Okay. Y'all like my eyes? <laughs> Alright, now, here's what we're going to, this is like our final step, and then we'll be done with these taters. Alright, so we're going to take, we're going to take our cheddar cheese shredded, we're going to take our barbecue sauce, and we're going to take our scallions, okay? Um, I need scissors and a brush. Y'all see, I'm always prepared, ain't I? And I tell you what, <laughs> if I was any more prepared, I'd be the slow boat to China, wouldn't I? All right, so for our tops, and you can put sour cream up here if you want to. I do need a little bowl or a cup or something to put what we're going to go with this. Here's my creamer. This is what we use to stick. Uh, salsa or taco sauce or whatever we need to add. Alright, we're going to say that that's going to be enough. 
it's not I can always pour out more you're gonna take a brush and you're gonna put in that barbecue sauce and you're gonna paint you're gonna get this barbecue sauce and you're gonna do a good I am gonna have to pour more in here you're gonna do a good hearty layer all the way around you want to coat that bacon and it's going to do the same thing about like our sausage it is going to caramelize it's going to make it a, a good brown color it's going to caramelize and make it kind of sticky and ooey gooey good can't handle it i just can't handle it y'all it's gonna be so good okay come on out you know you want to all right we're gonna have to take this little wait wait I might have to encourage it out, or I might actually have to go and uh, get another bottle. Like I said, we're using it up, Buttercup. It's just the bottle feels heavy. I don't think there's any more in there. Alright, I'm going to have to get another bottle of barbecue sauce. Hold on. It's honey as well. So, I hear ya. Alright. Turn that off. Let's see. Alright, we're gonna need a lot. <coughs> that was the barbecue sauce, not me. Uh, Alright, I think that's gonna be good. Like I said, if I was more prepared, it'd scare the crap out of me. Alright, I'm just going to keep kind of painting this on. Like I said, you want it thick. You want to know that it's on there. If you don't like barbecue sauce, you could, I guess, essentially skip this step. Um, you could do it with your favorite barbecue sauce. You could do it with, um, just do the topping on the potato going to show you how we're going to do that in a minute. All right. We just want to kind of coat that bacon really, really good. Make sure, yeah, like that. Make sure to kind of get it in the crevices. The cooks, the crooks and crannies. Or nooks and, it's nooks and crannies. I hope you don't have cook crooks. You can have cooks, but not crooks. Is it crooks and crannies or nooks? Nooks and crooks. I don't know. Or nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. That would be it, wouldn't it? Lord, I'm crazy. We knew I'm either A, B, or C. I am C. Remember? Whoa. Well, that let me know I needed to get right there, didn't it? All right. Thank you for tipping over. You just wanted to have that side doing. Like at the beauty shop. Don't look right. Lean over. Get her attention. Hey, uh-oh. Now what you leaning over now for? I coated you pretty good. What's wrong with you? I'll sit you up in a minute. You lay down that your own fault. I'm trying to eke out this one with what little bit's left in my cup. Ah, uh, Miss George. She is the best alarm system. We don't need ABT with her girl. I'll tell you what. She either hears something or knows something or it's time for people to be getting home from work. And so as they drive through the neighborhood, she lets us know they're on the premises or going through. All right, 
This is all I'm going to do. Oh, we need to top with our cheese. Excuse me. We will do our scallions when they actually come out. Alright, so we're going to top with some cheese. And you can actually kind of, kind of squish it on there. This is shredded cheese, but I did a boo-boo. I vacuum sealed it, and I vacuum sealed it too tight. So it stuck together, and there's no, you can crumble it apart. I didn't put it in the freezer, I just put it in the refrigerator. But there you go, it is what it is. All right, we're going to put these in on broil for just a few minutes. We just want to broil this barbecue sauce and melt this cheese. All right, so we're going to go. All right, you and me are going to have to have a twister fight. I'm going to hold you. She keeps wanting to lean over. I don't know why I said a she. It must be a he because he won't act right. So it's got to be a he. Okay, I'm just going to pierce it with the other potatoes too. Now it ain't going to nowhere. I'm looking at barbecue sauce. Hey, Tara Beth! Hey. You want to come talk to people? You need to get the, the low down. Can hey. you see yourself? Yes. Okay. Talk away. What do you want to talk about? I uh, don't know. Um, can you give a shout out to people? Hi. You know, shout out means like say, hey, Miss Amy. Hey, Miss Amy. Hey, Miss Sandy. Hey, Miss Sandy. Hey, Miss Dawn. Uh, hey, Miss uh, Dawn. And Darlene and Grady. Hi, Darlene and Grady. Um, who else? I'm thinking. My mind don't work, does it, Carol Beth? Neither does mine. Oh, uh, neither does yours? No. Well, then we're in trouble because you are the brains of this outfit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you throw that in the garbage? And with COVID curl. COVID curl. Tell them that's, that's what. Lord. That's the nickname we gave Daddy. Yes, old sweet heaven. <laughs> Going COVID round two. Yep, round two. We're hoping he's going to be the only one. Yes. Yes. I left my lemon water in the microwave, but I did not clean the microwave. Oh boy. That's lovely, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to leave it out and I can redo it. Maybe now that I'll remember. Who knows? So what else, my love? Nothing. Nothing, honey. Just hunkering and bunkering. Hunkering and bunkering. And, yeah. Um, hopefully. Y'all have. I wanna... Yeah, tell them what we did today. What did we do this morning? Got COVID test. We did. We went for a COVID test to kind of be a little bit proactive, huh? And have to wait for a few days. Yeah, we took the long one, didn't we? Well, we'll have to kind of wait for just a bit. Well, I see how I'm cold. Then it won't go home. Yeah, no? Yes. Yes. So, we're just kind of waiting, huh? Yes, I do not like waiting. Now, if she's not a patient one. She is not a patient patient. No. <laughs> we did hear back from her ultrasound. <gasps> Tell me about that. I got a lipoma. A benign lipoma. Yeah. Lipoma. Lipoma. Yep. Yeah. So that's cool. We can handle that, right? Yes. Yeah. So Dr. Freeman said don't do nothing about it. Just kind of watch it about once a week. Check it and make sure it's not getting bigger. Yep. Okay? Because yep. if it gets bigger, we can go and get it cut out. 
Oh, I wish my whole butt would be considered a lipoma and I could cut it out. <laughs> of course, I don't want to be flat butted. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. I just got through cutting up some of my scallions. Because when the potatoes come out, we're going to put them on there. And that will actually be our last step. I've got my butter peas in the microwave. My sausage is done. Once everything is done, I'll show you. Okay. I'm so glad I checked my potatoes when I did. Because guess what? We'd be done. If I would have waited any longer, it would have been done done. See, he just kept leaning, so I let him lean into that. This one's too thick. But he got good done. Look at that. Cut glazed. Now watch what happens if we do this. Top it with some scallions. You can top it with some sour cream. I bet that would be good. Alright, can we take our scallions? Oh, heck yeah. We're going to take our scallions off. Alright. Well, I took the scallions off. We are going to top it with some sour cream. Just like so. Look at that. I'm not going to put sour cream on Carol Bess. She does not like. Well, crud. Get on there. All right. Now, we're just going to take these scallions. I did cut too many, but oh well. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Alright, so that is our loaded volcano potatoes. Amazing. I did it, y'all. I am a Pinterest-worthy mom. Okay, not really, but I came close. Doesn't that look good? Yum. So I will leave a link um, to how I did it. I would say I'd link a video, but no, I'm not going to link anything. I'm going put to the, put the recipe in the description box down below because none of the videos I saw was like the one that I found, but I can't find no more. I don't know whose it was, but, and I changed some of it. I did my tweak on it, so it is my own recipe. I did something good, y'all. <laughs> so there's our taters. I'm so excited about those. And then here is our just sausage that has been just kind of doing. See how it kind of glazed on it? It could still... I turned the heat down because I could not keep running between the microwave and here and the potatoes. So I turned the heat down so it's a little bit more saucy than usual. It's not as sticky. So that might be a great thing. They're done because kielbasa is already fully cooked. So there you go. Now let's get our peas out of the microwave. Like I said, it's good to have some veggies in the freezer. When you do like a big thing of dried beans or my black eyed peas were dried and I just went ahead and made up the whole one pound bag. And so I had leftovers. I knew I was going to have leftovers. Look in the, the drawer for a pot holder. But not the right drawer. Um, but I went ahead and made it because I wanted those extras to go into the freezer. Because I'm thinking ahead of that's a, a side or part of a meal that, you know, I don't have to worry about cooking. Here's these ladyfinger peas or butter peas, whatever you want to call them. They're done. Yeah, so supper is done. And my main, the main part of our meal, the potatoes, that's what took the most time. So I picked an easy meat and an easy side. So, okay, I just had to show you what the potato looked like cut open. And I just pulled the sour cream off the top, pulled the sour cream and scallions into it. And, but look at that. That's that mixture. Remember, 
our twice baked potato mixture that we just shoved in. Oh my goodness. Yes, please. Yes, please. There's the butter peas and the kielbasa. So, enjoy. Until next time, y'all be good, be sweet. Have a volcano. <laughs> and cook up some extra and freeze it. It's always good to have extra, especially nowadays. Ooh, don't waste nothing. Freeze it. Even if you have, I'll show you my container I got going in there for soup. Every time we get done with supper, if there's English peas, even just a little bit, I'll throw them in that container. Green beans, corn, um, everything but the kitchen sink. And we actually call it everything but the kitchen sink soup. So, any veggies go in that container in the freezer. When it gets full, we can make soup. So, until next time, y'all be good. Bye, hoins.